It's time. I'm delivering my 2023 statistical projections for the Buffalo Bills offense today on Locked On Bills. You are Locked On Bills, your daily Buffalo Bills podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. What's up, Bills Mafia? It's Show Marino, author of Go Bills and Buffalo's Run, also the co-host of the Locked On NFL Scouting Podcast, and I'm your host of Locked On Bills. I want to thank you for making Locked On Bills your first listen every day, and a big welcome and shout out to our everydayers. You know who you are. Those of you who never miss a single episode, I appreciate y'all being here very, very much. I'd also like to invite you to subscribe or follow for free on YouTube or wherever you listen to podcasts. We're part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Well, folks, it's finally time for me to do this. I've been talking about it for it feels like about a month now, where every year I go through and I project all of the Buffalo Bills offensive stats. And I've had some success with this over the years. I predicted Josh Allen's big breakout in 2020. My receiving totals were really good in 2021. My rushing totals were were almost perfect last year. And so I've had some success with this. I look forward to doing it every year. And it's time to finally deliver these numbers to you. And there's going to be a lot of numbers on today's podcast. So this is one where you want to kind of buckle up and dial in and listen to a bunch of numbers. I'm going to explain the how and why behind all the numbers, but there's going to be a lot of numbers. And so you'll have to just kind of bear with that. That's the nature of our discussion today. I'm projecting all of these numbers. So let's have some fun. Let's go through this. It's a little bit challenging because everything has to fit together. I can sit here and say all day long that this player is going to have this many catches and targets, but it all has to add up. And that's the big challenge with this. And so hopefully you'll appreciate the process that went into this. And, um, you know, the best predictor of future Behavior is past behavior, and so I'm going to lean a lot into some some historical numbers here to get us to some reasonable projected outcomes in 2023 for the Buffalo Bills offense. So what, let's let's do it. Let's start. And where you have to start is figuring out how many plays per game are the Buffalo Bills going to run, and from there, what is the distribution between passing attempts and rushing attempts? And then you just kind of fill it in from there. And so how many plays per game will the Bills have in 2023? I am projecting 65 plays per game. In 2020, they had 63. In 2021, 66. 2022, 65. And so I'm going with 65 plays per game again in 2023. And what's interesting about each of the last three seasons, the Bills have had the exact same run-to-pass ratio in all of those seasons. 59% pass. 49% run, and so we're going to do that again. I see no reason to come off of that 59% pass, 41% run. And so out of my 65 plays per game, 38 of them are passing plays, 27 of them, excuse me, 27 of them are rushing plays. Now from there, I need to figure out how many times Josh Allen is going to get sacked. And so Josh Allen, what's interesting about, about his sack numbers is that his sack percentage has declined every year of his career until last year. As a rookie in 2018, he got sacked 8% of his dropbacks. 2019, 7.6. 2020, 4.3. 2021, 3.9. Up to 5.5% in 2022. I don't think he gets sacked on 5.5% of his dropbacks this coming year. I'm going to project him at 4% of his dropbacks. He's going to get sacked. And the reason I'm projecting him to be closer to where he was in 2020 and 2021 in a one and a half percent dip as well. I, I think the Bills offensive line's better. Hopefully both guard spots are better this year. Hopefully Spencer Brown's better in year three, but really it comes back to familiarity with the scheme. And I think that's going to allow him to know where his answers are under pressure. And I'm hoping that the Bills protection schemes are better in, in Ken Dorsey's second season. And so I have 38 passing plays per game. Times 17, that's 646 passing plays in 2023. Now, 4% of them are sacks, which means Josh Allen will be sacked 26 times in 2023. And so I'm projecting Josh Allen to throw the football 620 times. So 620 passing attempts is what I'm projecting for Josh Allen in 2023. 
Now, what are we doing with these 620 passing attempts? How many are completed, yards per attempt, all that stuff? That's what we're going to talk about now. So Josh Allen, 620 passing attempts. The next thing we have to figure out is what his completion percentage is going to be. And looking back at Josh Allen's completion percentage numbers in 2020, 69%. 2021, 63%. That was 24th in the NFL. 2022, also 63%. That was 23rd. And so Josh Allen, over the last couple of seasons, has been in the bottom 25% of the NFL in completion percentage. That's a number where if it gets closer to the 69% it was in 2020, that's going to be good news for the Bills on offense. I'm not going to project him to go all the way back up to 69%, but I am going to project a little bit of a bump, a 3% bump. So 66% completion percentage for Josh Allen in 2023. That would be 16th last year. And so I'm thinking more easy button throws, a deeper group of weapons, year two with Ken Dorsey as the play caller. And what's important about that 66% number is it tells us how many completions there's going to be. And that means of the 620 passing attempts, 409 of them will be completed. From there, we need to figure out what his yards per attempt is going to be. And so looking through Josh Allen's career at yards per attempt, 2020, 7.94, 2021, 6.82, 2022, 7.6. In 2023, I'm going to have him right there at that same 7.6. And it's going to be a different way to get to 7.6. In 2022, that yards per attempt was really elevated by so many deep throws that were completed. I think, and I hope, it gets there to that same 7.6 yards per attempt with more efficiency and more balance in how the passing offense operates. And so at 7.6 yards per attempt, or that, that gets us to 4,712 passing yards. So I'm projecting 4,000. 712 passing yards for Josh Allen in 2023. Well, now how many passing touchdowns? And the way that I get there is I focus in on what percentage of Josh Allen's throws are typically touchdowns. In 2020, he had 37 passing touchdowns. 6.5% of his throws were touchdowns. 2021, he had 36 passing touchdowns. 5.6% of his throws were touchdowns. In 2022, he had 35 passing touchdowns. 6.2% of his passing attempts were touchdowns. This coming year, I think that he's going to have a touchdown percentage of 6.1%. And so that gets us to 38 passing touchdowns for Josh Allen in 2023. It comes in close to where the numbers have fallen in the previous three seasons. I don't expect a big dip there, and I don't expect a notable bump. I think 6.1% is a pretty healthy spot for him to be. That's That's towards the top of the league. Last year at 6.2%, he was second in the NFL in percentage of throws that were touchdowns. So I think he'll be hanging out about there again. Now we got to figure out how many interceptions. And I do interceptions just like I do touchdowns. What percentage of throws for Josh Allen are historically interceptions? Well, in 2020, he threw 10 interceptions. That was 1.7%. 2021, 15 interceptions. That was 2.3%. 2022, 12 interceptions, that was 2.5%. And this coming year, I think that he gets down a little bit, not quite to the 1.7% of 2020, but not the 2.5% last year. I'm going with a projection of 2.1%, which means 13 interceptions for Josh Allen in 2023. And then you just calculate the passer rating from there, and that's a passer rating of 100.42. And if he has a passing passer rating of 100.42, that would be 7th in the NFL last year. Josh was eighth in the NFL in passer rating last year. And so as we close out the Josh Allen portion of this, in in a moment we get into, all right, where does this passing production go in terms of distribution of targets and and yards and touchdowns? Josh Allen, my projections for him in 2023, 620 attempts, 409 completions, a completion percentage of 66%, 4,712 passing yards, 7.6 7.6 yards per attempt, 38 passing touchdowns, 13 interceptions, and a passer rating of 100.42. And so that's where I think Josh Allen's numbers in 2023 fall. All right, in just a moment, we're going to talk about where these numbers get gobbled up by the Bills receivers. Of course, Stefan Diggs, Dalton Kincaid, all those projections are coming your way here in just a moment. But first, football season kicks off this Thursday, and there's no better way to get in on the action than with Underdog Fantasy and their Pick'em game. 
Just pick between two to five players, select where they'll go higher or lower on one of their stats, then do what you usually do and spend kickoff night watching the game. And you can win up to 20 times your money in a single game by going five for five. It's a fantasy game, but you can win real money. It's legal in over 30 states, and it's a ton of fun. If you want to build your dream team today, head on over to their easy-to-use mobile app or website, underdogfantasy.com. When you sign up with promo code Locked On, and not only will Underdog double your first deposit of up to $100, but they also have a Pick'em Special live now in their Pick'em Lobby. Patrick Mahomes just has to get one yard for your pick to be correct. So remember, that's Underdog Fantasy. Sign up with promo code Locked On. Use the link in the description or scan the QR code if you're watching us on YouTube. Bills Mafia, let's get personal for a minute. Has anyone ever been caught skinny dipping? You know what I mean. When you dip your tortilla chip just barely enough to get a dab of salsa on it, it's okay. We've all been there. And sometimes it's not your fault. Most tortilla chips can't even handle a chunky dip without breaking right in half. But those days, they're over. It's time to say goodbye to skinny dipping and hello to chunky dunking because Zach's Mighty Tortilla Chips are literally made to dip. They're strong, they're sturdy, and they're sturdy enough to handle the heftiest dips of guac, all seven layers of dip, and every last chunk in that salsa. So say goodbye to skinny dipping and hello to chunky dunking with Zach's Mighty Tortilla Chips, available at Wegmans in the chip aisle. Zach's Mighty Tortilla Chips, equipped to dip. All right, folks, so we've got Josh Allen's passing numbers all figured out for 2023. Now, who gobbles up all of those numbers? And so let's work through it. We'll start with Stephon Diggs, wide receiver one. His targets, his targets have been pretty close each of the last three seasons since he's been in Buffalo. 166 his first year, 164 his second year, and last year, 163 if you would have taken what he averaged in 16 games and projected it to 17. Remember, that's the thing about the Bills' stats last year is they only played 16 games. So I'm projecting 165 targets for Stephon Diggs in 2023. From there, let's figure out his receptions and his reception percentage. I think Steph Diggs will haul in, of those 165 targets, 69.6% of those targets will be will be receptions, which is on pace with his career average of 69.8% in Buffalo. So 69.6% reception percentage on 165 targets. That gets us to 115 catches for Stefan Diggs in 2023. I think he'll have 12 and a half yards per reception, which is right on par with his career mark. And that gets us to 1,437 receiving yards. I am projecting 12 receiving touchdowns. That's an aggressive number, but I want him to break that record so bad. The single season franchise record Four receiving touchdowns for the Bills is 11. Bill Brooks did it in 95. Steph Diggs tied it last year. I think he breaks it this year. Steph Diggs year one in Buffalo, eight receiving touchdowns, 10 in year two, 11 last year. Give me 12 in 2023 and a new record for receptions, for receiving totals, right? Receiving touchdown receptions. uh, That'll break the record in 2023. Next up is Gabe Davis. His targets, I'm projecting 102 targets for. Gabe Davis in 2023, which maintains the six per game pace he had in 2022. So 102 targets. And then we have to get into his reception percentage. And this has been a a big number for Gabe because it's been pretty poor. Uh, In 2020, 56.5%. 2021, 55.6%. Last year, down to 51.6%. That's got to come up. And I'm going to project that it does. I think Gabe Davis hauls in 60% of his targets in 2023, that gets us to 61 catches. I think he'll average 15 yards per catch, which is a, which is a little bit of a dip. He's he's had a 16-point average for his career, 17.4 last year, but I think the lower overall average depth of target for Gabe, some more efficiency, not having to deal with the ankle injury, that's going to help his efficiency. That's going to lead to some closer targets. I still think he's going to be used down the field, but not quite to the degree that it was in 2022. And so that gets us to 915 receiving yards for Gabe Davis. I'm going with seven receiving touchdowns. He's been right at seven pretty much every year. Seven as a rookie, six his second season, seven last year. I think seven receiving touchdowns for Gabe in 2023 makes sense. So 102 targets, 61 catches, 
915 yards, seven touchdowns for Gabe Davis in 2023. Now let's get to Dawson Knox. And one of the big talking points that I've had with Dawson Knox and the arrival of Dalton Kincaid is that I don't really think Dalton Kincaid messes too much with Dawson Knox's projections and his, his numbers. And so for Dawson, I'm projecting 70 targets, which is 4.1 per game. He had four and a half per game over the last two seasons. So pretty much on par with his normal target quantity. I think he hauls in 71.4% of those targets, which is pretty close to where he's been 73.8% last year, 69% in 2021. And that gets us to 50 catches. I think he'll average 11 yards per catch. His career average is 11.9. So pretty close to that. That gets us to 550 yards and seven receiving touchdowns. So 70 targets for, for Knox, 50 catches, 550 yards, seven touchdowns. Now time for Dalton Kincaid. And I know this is one that I'm sure a lot of you guys are curious about. It's a lot of guesswork here uh, based on how he'll be used. And I think his I think his production is going to increase as the season moves along. But let's not forget he's a rookie. He's a tight end. Tight ends are a bit slow developing. I think Kincaid can get ahead of that. And I think his projections are pretty reasonable. So let's work through them. And then I'll tell you where those numbers would have fallen last year amongst all total tight ends. So I feel like some people are going to be mad about where I have him, but then stick through the whole conversation here. And I think you'll see, yeah, it's a pretty good projection. So for Dalton Kincaid, I'm projecting a total of 65 targets. I think he'll catch 66% of those targets. That gets us to 43 catches, 11.7 yards per catch. That's kind of where I, I looked at other tight ends that I thought were kind of like him. I thought that was a reasonable number, 11.7 yards per catch, which gets us to exactly 500 yards, uh, 500 yards, and I'm projecting five receiving touchdowns for Dalton Kincaid. So 65 targets, 43 catches, 11.7 yards per reception, 500 yards, five touchdowns for Kincaid. And maybe you're thinking that's underwhelming. Well, what if I told you that last year, those statistics, 2022 uh, statistics among tight ends, those receptions, 43 catches, that would have been 19th in the NFL. Those yards, I projected 500 yards. That's 17th in the NFL. It would have been last year amongst tight ends. And five receiving touchdowns would be seventh most among NFL tight ends. So top 20 in receptions and yards and in top 10 in receiving touchdowns for Dalton Kincaid as a rookie tight end. Not to mention what I, what I projected from Dawson Knox. And I mean, I'm basically projecting right at about 95 receptions, about 1,100 yards and 12 touchdowns for the Bills for their tight ends next year, which is a, a big uptick, a big uptick from where it's typically been. James Cook, I'm projecting 60 targets. Devin Singletary last year had 52. I think he, he hauls in 75% of those targets, which, you know, normal amount for a top uh, pass catching back is around 80%. So maybe that could be a little bit higher. Um, but I, that'll get us to 45 catches if he hauls in 75% of his 60 targets. I think he averages eight and a half yards per catch. He averaged 8.6 last year. That gets us to 383 yards and two touchdowns. So 60 targets, 45 catches, 383 yards, two touchdowns for James Cook. Now we kind of get into this bucket that's really hard for me, the Trent Sherfield, Deontay Hardy, Khalil Shakir bucket. And what's interesting here is, you know, the Bills don't typically have the distribution of receiving numbers this deep into guys, right? Where I think there's going to be a number of players this year that really have roles, not huge volume roles. I got through the big volume guys already, but I think these guys are going to have a role. And when you think about the guys that have been sixth or seventh or eighth on the Bills peck, pecking order for targets in the past, their, their numbers haven't been that robust. And so I am projecting quite a bit here from the bottom of the barrel when it comes to the Bills. Um, pass catcher. So Trent Shurfield projecting 50 targets. I think he'll catch 60% of those, which is higher than his career mark of 56.3%. That gets us to 30 catches. I think he averages 11 yards per catch. His career average is 12.6. I think it'll be a little bit lower. I don't think he'll quite be that, that random throw the ball down the field guy. I think he'll have a little bit more of a, of a consistent balance and where he catches the football. So I think 11 makes sense there for me, which gets us to 330 yards and two touchdowns. So 50 targets, 30 catches, 330 yards, two touchdowns for Trent Sherfield. Deontay Hardy, 45 targets is what I'm projecting. 
Uh, reception percentage, 66.6%. His career is 696 Have a slight dip there, adjusting to a new quarterback. That gets us to 30 catches for Deontay Hardy. Nine and a half yards per catch. That's lower than his 12.4 career mark. I think he's going to be used a lot in the short passing game, just kind of based on some of the clues and watching camp in preseason, which gets us to 285 yards, two touchdowns. So 45 targets for Deontay Hardy, 30 catches, 285 yards, two touchdowns. Khalil Shakir is the last player I'm going to project, and then everyone else will fall into the other bucket. Khalil Shakir, 30 targets. I think his reception percentage is 66.6%, which is up significantly from last year at 50%. That gets us a 20 catches, 11 and a half yards per cast catch, which is just kind of a pure guess based on what norms are for players like him. That gets us a 230 yards, and I'm not going to project the receiving touchdown for Khalil Shakir. So I know that might be a little bit of an underwhelming number um, for Khalil Shakir in year two, but there's a lot of players here, especially when you consider Deontay Hardy and Trent Shurfield, who I think are going to be better options for the Bills this year, not to mention the addition of Dalton Kincaid. I think really kind of stiff arms Khalil Shakir from having a big jump in production production. Then in the other bucket, Latavius Murray, Damian Harris, Quentin Morris, Reggie Gilliam, Justin Shorter. I have 15 catches, 82 yards and a touchdown combined from those players. And so generally speaking here, you have a more defined bottom of the barrel when it comes to targets, right? Like last year, think about that. Those guys that were sixth, seventh, eighth, ninth in targets, the guys like Jamison Crowder, Jake Kumaro, John Brown, Cole Beasley, Tanner Gentry, really random guys that got some targets where I think you have just more of a defined receiving core and defined pecking order for where you want to go with the football. And so that kind of shifts a lot of the targets that you would project in this other bucket more towards players that I think are going to be more established in in the offense with consistency. Now, obviously, injuries can throw the whole thing off. There's no question, but this has to assume health for everybody. And, you know, guys miss a game or two that really shifts the, the production around. Um, so just be mindful of that as you consider the numbers that I put together. So let's uh, I'll give you those numbers here to close out the receiving um, segment here in totality. So Steph Diggs, 165 targets, 115 completions or receptions, excuse me, 1,437 yards, 12 touchdowns. Gabe Davis, 102 targets, 61 catches, 915 yards seven touchdowns. Trent Shurfield, 50 targets, 30 catches, 330 yards, two touchdowns. Deontay Hardy, 45 targets, 30 catches, 285 yards, two touchdowns. Khalil Shakir, 30 targets, 20 catches, 230 yards, zero touchdowns. Dawson Knox, 70 targets, 50 catches, 550 yards, seven touchdowns. Dalton Kincaid, 65 targets, 43 receptions, 500 yards, five touchdowns. James Cook, 60 targets, 45 catches, 383 yards, two touchdowns. Other, 33 targets, 15 catches, 82 yards, one touchdown. And so I have the Bills with, is that four guys with over 500 receiving yards? Yeah, Diggs, Davis, Knox, and Kincaid, all 500 or more. And you've got four guys here with five or more receiving touchdowns. I think this is pretty healthy. I I feel pretty good about it. You know, again, sorting out the Shurfield, Hardy, Shakir. I mean, even Dalton Kincaid, who knows? I mean, I feel good about it, but who knows? I mean, could he command even more? Yes, I think that's possible. Where do you take that away? From Shurfield? From from Hardy? I mean, it's 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 challenging to project. You have a new wrinkle, a new personnel grouping that we've never seen for the Bills. Uh, but I think just based on historical norms, logic, kind of my – Clues from watching this team in camp in preseason. That's where I think this receiving distribution settles in 2023. All right, rushing is coming up here in just a moment. But first, our partners over at eBay Motors have teamed up with Locked On Fantasy Football host Vinny Iyer to bring you some of the best fantasy picks each week, all season long. So whether you're prepping for a draft or scouting the waiver wire, every week we're going to provide you with players that are guaranteed to fit on your roster. So with draft prep underway for the upcoming season, let's see who Vinny has picked out for us on this week's eBay's Guaranteed Fit Fantasy Picks of the Week. Are you looking for a player to take in fantasy football drafts who will spark with his new team's offense and also help you speed to victory? Then use a luxury pick on Bears wide receiver DJ Moore. Didn't take long for the former Panther to go from 0-60 to 60 after his big trade, cruising into an easy role as Justin Fields' new go-to guy. 
Moore was fine in Carolina, but he will perform better than ever while dominating targets from a young QB in Chicago. Vinny Iyer from Lockdown Fantasy Football is going to help you win your fantasy championship, and eBay Motors knows a championship team is about each player being a perfect fit. Same with your vehicle. With eBay Guaranteed Fit and over 122 million parts and accessories for your vehicle right at your fingertips, you can make sure your ride stays running smoothly. Air filters, brakes, batteries, taillights, alternators, shock struts, you name it, eBay Motors has it, and they'll make sure it's the right fit for your car because eBay Guaranteed Fit helps you understand exactly what part you need for your vehicle the first time. So go forth, switch gears, crank the AC, and say goodbye to sweating if your ride needs a little fixing up, because now you know you'll always be set up for success from the get-go. With eBay Guaranteed Fit, everything your vehicle is calling for is just a click away. For the parts and accessories that fit your vehicle, just look for the green check. Get the right parts, the right fit, and the right prices at ebaymotors.com. Let's ride. eBay Guaranteed Fit, only available to U.S. customers. Eligible items only. Exclusions apply. All right, let's talk about these rushing statistics for the Bills in 2023. Last year, I crushed these projections. I was within eight yards of projecting the team total. And for all the major characters, Singletary, Allen, Cook, I was within like 60 to 80 yards of all of them. The re- the touchdowns were really close. So let's see if I can uh, replicate the success I had last year. And so remember, 65 plays per game, a uh, rush percentage of 41%. So we get 27 rushing attempts per game to distribute, which means 459 rushing attempts for the year. Start with James Cook, the lead ball carrier, my projected lead ball carrier for the Bills in 2023. I think he gets 175 rushing attempts. Now, Devin Singletary has been the Bills' lead ball carrier uh, over the last four seasons. He's averaged 168 rushing attempts per season, and I'm putting James Cook at 175, which is a pretty healthy bump uh, from where he was last year and kind of what his career has been throughout Georgia and his rookie season with the Bills. I mean, I think his previous high was like 140. I think the Bills are going to be pretty mindful of that, and I don't think they're going to push him like to the 225 mark or anything like that. So I think 175 for James Cook, 4.75 yards per carry. That's a dip from last year. I mean, he's 5.7 last year as a rookie, but more volume is going to make it hard to sustain nearly six yards per carry. I think 4.75 is still a very good number. Um, That makes a lot of sense for James Cook as he takes on more volume. That gets us to 831 yards for James Cook, and I'm going to project five rushing touchdowns for him. For Josh Allen, I'm projecting 100 rushing attempts. That's 5.88 per game, which would be the lowest of his career. His career average is 7.1 rushing yards per game. It was 7.8 last year, 7.1 in 2021. I mean, I'm projecting two less rushing attempts per game, which is pretty significant. So 5.88 per game, that's 100 rushing attempts for the season. I think he gets 6.1 yards per carry. That's kind of where he's been over the last couple of years, 6.3 in 2021, 6.1 in 2022. So 6.1 yards per carry, that's 610 yards. And I think he gets seven rushing touchdowns. That's pretty much where he's been for his career as a rookie at eight, uh, nine the next year, eight the next year, six in 2021, seven in 2022. Now, Damian Harris and Latavius Murray, I think they're going to they're gonna be benefits to each other. You know, Damian Harris is a good young back but he's got some, you know, kind of some soreness in his legs, his knee from time to time that's kind of impacted him throughout his career. And then Latavius Murray is the oldest running back in the league. So I think the Bills are going to take this RB2 role and really make it two guys doing it together. That's going to benefit a guy that has some injury concerns and a guy that has some age concerns. And so I think Damian Harris gets 93 rushing attempts. Um, I think he averages 4.49 yards per carry. That's up from 4.7 for his career. That's down from 4.7 for his career, but but close. That's 418 yards, four touchdowns for Damian Harris. Latavius Murray, I'm projecting 81 rushing attempts, which is the lightest of his career outside of his rookie season. He's had at least 119 carries in each of the last eight seasons and more than 140 in seven of those. So 81 rushing attempts for Latavius Murray in 2023. I think he averages 4.51 yards per carry, which is up from 4.2 for his career. I think he'll you know, won't have as many opportunities. I think he'll be a little fresher and be able to grind out a few more yards. So four and a half yards per carry, which means 365 yards. And I'm going to project three touchdowns. Then the other bucket, I don't think there's going to be a lot going on in this other bucket. I'll go with 10 attempts for 50 yards. 
you know, that's your Deontay Hardy might have a couple. Reggie Gilliam might have a couple. Um, might be some kneel downs from a backup quarterback that comes into the game, you know, Kyle Allen, something like that. So I, I think those those four guys, Cook, Allen, Harris, Murray, are going to take just about every rushing attempt for the Bills in 2023. So that would put the Bills uh, – in total, 459 attempts, 2,274 yards, 4.95 yards per carry, and 19 rushing touchdowns, which would be a little more productive than they were last year, to be honest with you. Um, maybe not for yards per carry. I think James Cook is that X factor, elevated it a little bit. Um, but, you know, I, still a really productive rushing offense, obviously influenced by Josh Allen and 610 yards, but that's part of who he is. I mean, that's part of what makes him special. That's part of what helps the Bills run the football. And so I don't, I don't, not projecting that to go from, you know, 124 rushing attempts for Josh Allen down to like 70. I still think he's going to run the ball a fair amount. Not necessarily design runs. There'll be some, but, you know, scrambles count as rushing attempts. And so I'm having him at 5.88 yards per, or excuse me, 5.88 rushing attempts per game. All right, real quick, let's get to Tyler Bass and where this scoring offense all settles. For Tyler Bass, I project him to go 29 of 33 on field goals. That's right at about 87, 88%, which is in line with where he's been over the last couple of seasons. I think he goes 54 of 56 on extra points. I'm projecting three two-point attempts for the Bills. So 57 offensive touchdowns, um, but only 56 extra points for Tyler Bass because I am projecting them to go for two a couple of times, but also I am projecting two miscellaneous touchdowns. So that could be a defensive touchdown, special teams touchdown. Um, you know, I think Milano had one last year, and then Naheem Hines had two uh, kick returns, obviously, the last game. So I think two throughout the 17 games in 2023 makes sense. 29 field goals, 54 extra points. That puts the Bills right at about 495 to 500 yards, depending on the success rate of those three two-point conversions. That's going to put them right at about 29 points per game, which will once again put them as a top three uh, scoring offense in the NFL based on where that number typically falls within the league. So there you have it. My Bills projected numbers. Let me go back to the rushing numbers real quick. James Cook, 175 attempts, 831 yards, five touchdowns. Josh Allen, 100 attempts, 610 yards, seven touchdowns. Damian Harris, 93 attempts, 418 yards, four touchdowns. Latavius Murray, 81 attempts, 365 yards, three touchdowns, other 10 for 50, no touchdowns. So there you have it. I've been pretty close in the past. Hopefully I'm pretty close because these are pretty healthy numbers. I think, you know, this is MVP caliber stuff for Josh Allen. Another big time year for Steph Diggs. A thousand yards going to tight ends. What in the world, right? James Cook with a, a healthy bump in, in production in, in his second season as he takes over. Uh, the Bills' lead ball carrier role. I mean, he's going to be well over a thousand yards from scrimmage, um, and so it's a little bit of a challenging year, probably more so than any other year. Given, like I said, the twelve personnel, more running backs that I think will take the football, uh, more receiver depth. Right? How do they incorporate all of it? So we'll uh, we'll see what this looks like at the end of seventeen games. All right, folks, it is uh, that time of year. The NFL regular season is here. It kicks off on Thursday. The Bills play on Monday Night Football. And so, you know, we'll we'll kind of get into our in-season programming. And like I mentioned, end of last week, I've got some tweaks this year. I'm adding some stuff. Um, so we're probably going to talk about that tomorrow. We're going to get to herd mentality and start doing the stuff that we do to get ready for a football game. Obviously, the Jets on Monday Night Football, it's all coming up. So make sure that you are subscribed. would love it if you took a second to rate, review, and share the podcast. Have a great rest of your day. Go Bills. And I look forward to catching up with you again tomorrow.